welcome parents and guests of our lovely third graders. We are so excited that you are able to join us for the third grade mock college performance. The students have been working hard to prepare this experience for you over the last several weeks. They've read and researched their figures, learned about various fights for equality throughout history, and most importantly, worked on building empathy and understanding of what life was like for these important heroes. This year, students will be representing activists who fought for the equality of race, gender, working conditions, and more. Today, you will hear from our students speaking in the voice of some of these heroes. Thank you for coming and enjoy the performance. I'm so nervous right now, I think I'm sick. I'm about to speak in front of the Supreme Court, the highest court in the nation. I've spoken in front of other courts before, but none as big as this. This matters most, but I need to show confidence because this powerful court discriminates based on gender. As my current justice said, women has always been dependent upon men. I find this absolutely astonishing that someone would say such a thing. I need to teach these nine men, my nine new students, that a person's choices shouldn't be limited just because they're born a girl. I'm here mostly for female rights, but not just for that, it's for men too. I'm also about to speak for those who want gender discrimination to end. I mean, why shouldn't the husband stay home and take care of the children and cook the meals? Why shouldn't the wife run the business? I'm here also for my mother. Even though she passed away when I was in high school, I know she would be very proud of how far I've gotten and that I'm here today. I pray maybe all that she would have been had she lived in an age when women could inspire and achieve and daughters are cherished as much as sons. I know I won't win every case, but I hope with each victory, all men and women, boys and girls, will enjoy a little more equality. I will keep on fighting for the things I care about, but I will do it in a way that will lead others to join me. I will keep fighting. America. This is the America I believe in. 
This is just the beginning of a big change for better equality. We will have to continue the fight for equal rights and acceptance of all religions and races.
No, but you dare say to me, in the kitchen, then, besides, we'll see how beautiful I am, and be ashamed. I, too, am a man. for blind and I am so honored to be a student here. This is going to be my home sweet home for the rest of my life. I already love it here. I just can't wait to learn how to read and write and study mathematics too. But what if I'm not good at it? Or maybe I don't understand what I'm learning. I mean I'm alone without my parents. I can't see. I can't hear. How will I be able to communicate with others so they understand me? As I'm touching the alphabet in Braille that my uncle Austin Tenney gave me, who helped me with my struggles being blind and deaf when I was little, I wish he was standing right here by my side. Then again, I know that Mr. Howie, my teacher, will protect me like I'm his daughter because he took me onto a plane to get to New York City here in the first place. And I know deep down that my parents want me to attend and that this is the best place for me in my future. As I'm slowly walking into the classroom, mixed emotions flying through my mind, that's when I realized how far I've come from my horrible sickness, only two years old, losing my sight, hearing, and sense of smell to the plague. Scarlet fever would take away my dear sisters Mary and Colina, but fortunately not me. I remember those days where I would cry and shout and fuss around like a squirmy worm. My parents were at loss of what was wrong with me. But now I'm here at Perkins School for Blind, standing in front of my whole class. You never know when God has the chance to make the biggest miracles happen. Then I don't have to go to jail. 
But if I don't vote, one of my closest friends, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, will be left down, and I probably won't encourage any other woman to vote either. And then, maybe a woman can never be allowed to elect America's president. I have made a decision. Even though I'm nervous that I might be going to jail and treat badly, I'm going to vote. <coughs> Failure is impossible.
in some place of the sun, to whirl and to dance till the white day is done. Then rest that cool evening beneath the tall tree, while night comes on gently, dark like me. That is my dream, to fling my arms wide in the face of the sun. Dance, whirl, whirl, till the quick day is done. Rest at pale evening, a tall, slim tree, night coming tenderly, black like me. Here I am, I've got my desk, I've spent hours crafting tools. I've worked 
all day washing dishes and dusting windows. It's hardly to say because my desire is to write poems. I've been working on with George Washington, someone I really admire, but unsure if a slave could send something to someone. So I feel small compared to him. I've presented many poems to many white people before. But George Washington, chief, a great leader, the head of the Continental Army, I can't imagine. I'm so frightened. What if it's not good enough? I need to decide. Should I give this poem to George Washington, or should I not? Well, if I don't share this piece, I could keep writing poems and presenting them to white people other than George Washington. Mr. Washington might eventually find it and it on his own when it's published in the paper. I don't have to worry about what he thinks about it. But, if I do share this piece, I could be a leader, a role model to African American girls and boys. It would be an encouragement to find the talents and children of the world. If I give him my, my home, it will not only show him how much I respect his leadership, also give me a chance to speak to a fantastic man. Sir, I've taken the freedom to address your excellency in the enclosed poem and entreat your acceptance. Gave 
the wooden shoes, the rough scratchy flax clothes we had to wear. So to be here is a miracle, to be free, to have an education, to be graduating from this great school. To all you students out there who will soon be in my place, to be better students you must be wise and have common sense, a heart set on the right and a trust in God. Never let anyone or anything get in your way. And to all others who are graduating with me today, have a productive, educated life. Help others like you get as much of a chance to get an education as you did. As will I. Thank you. Oh, I was so lost in my own thoughts I forgot about the letter. Let me open it to see what it says. What? It's asking me to be a teacher and help open the new school Tusky Normal School. I thought they were looking for a white teacher. Thank you, Mr. Armstrong, for recommending that me to them. I'll be ever grateful. I'll take the job with great responsibility. <laughs> April Rain Song by Langston Hughes. Let the rain kiss you. Let the rain beat upon your head with silver liquid drops. The rain makes still pools on the sidewalk. The rain makes running pools in the gutter. The rain plays a little sleep song on a roof at night. And I love the rain.
may make a decision. I'll be the first person to fly across the entire world. I will have to pay care for the stream to prove the big supply of food. I can do this in a new year. Nobody will serve time in prison for these murders. Tom was a brave, courageous man, a family man. He left behind a wife, the most adorable little girl named Marie, and a child still in his wife's stomach. And believe me, he loved them so much, so much, that he left the white that he put his hand on a gun and the white shot his close fist off in cold blood. Oh Tom, I'm so sorry that those whites did this to you. I'll do everything I can to avenge your death. For your wife's sake, for little Marine, for all of us. You say I'm just a poor black woman. I say to you that the pen is mightier than the sword. And this is how I'll fight. I'll expose injustice. I have already gotten 6,000 families to move out of Memphis to Kansas and Oklahoma where they can start a new life for themselves out west. And I'll write about not only your lynching, but everyone else's throughout this house. My pen name is Iola. But mark my words, you'll soon know that my name is Ida B. Wells. I wrote what I wanted and needed to say in boxing papers, 
but, no, but I didn't say it, so nobody knew who wrote it. People always thought women couldn't write about politics, but I changed that. My political papers were just so many people who got these papers. But even though it was an important message, I still felt nervous that someone would find out or that people wouldn't listen. But I couldn't let this video get the best of me. I had to power through. The waves have rolled upon me. The bills are repeatedly broken on me, and I'm not so
In this book, Phineas Fogg completed the journey I was on, but he is fictional. I am real. Phineas Fogg talked, Jules Verne talked all about what they had heard. A conversation went on so long, he worried out of the next train. What inspiration he was. On this journey, I will have a competition. Another reporter, Elizabeth Dissons, was ahead of me, and I was behind. I was discouraged and worried I wouldn't make it, but I knew I had to persist. Along the way, I will admit I did get a little homesick, especially spending Christmas alone. I spent, to, I spent it alone in Hong Kong without my family, but I knew I needed to be there to beat Blaise Fogg and Elizabeth Dissons in under 80 days. From there, I went to Yokohama, then to San Francisco, hopped in train and headed up to New Jersey. On that train, I thought about what I had just done. My body was overcome with exhaustion. But then it hit me. After looking at my calculations, I'd gone out more than 72 days, 11 minutes, and 6 seconds. I heard cheers, cheers even before the train came to a stop. I could even see it on the men's faces. I, a woman, could be. I can't believe in the Westland Chapel in Seneca Falls. There's so many women in the audience. I'm, I'm so worried. Will they agree that women should have the same voting rights as men? So much is not equal in today's society. Women can become doctors, lawyers, or about a court. It's unfair that women can't keep their property or any money they own. We deserve more rights. We deserve the right to vote. I know she didn't make that for a while. I'm confident in the message of equality, and I will do this. As the crowd cheers, I step out onto the stage. This makes me feel excited at any time. And I will step closer in getting my dream of getting a woman the right to vote. As I begin to speak, the crowd passion, and I know a woman will vote someday. I hope people will remember the as a brought Not show it. 
My newspaper articles were encouraged black men and women to stop supporting white businesses and stop writing white on sweet Caroline. I'll not be quiet or fearful. When news spreads, people unite and make a change. I have the power to make a difference. Black men and women will be treated equally. Slavery has to end. 
If I do not sign the Emancipation Proclamation, I will look down half of the country. Here I go. I must do what is right. I must do what is right for the country. Almost all the black people in this country are being put to work just because their color of their skin is black. It is so unfair. They are being bought by, by the Americans. It is so unfair for the black people. They should be just as right as any other person. That's why I should sign this paper. I just signed the Emancipation Proclamation. I am dizzy with happiness. I am overjoyed. Nothing will stop me. My whole soul is in this. What an exciting day it's been. After I finished my lunch, I went outside to get the mail. It was the middle of the day, and I knew that the mail would arrive earlier. I opened the mailbox expecting nothing, but there was another just to me from the Federation of Aeronautic International. At first I was confused. What would they be sending me? But it quickly dawned on me. It must be my pilot's lessons. I excitedly opened the letter, and to my delight, I was right. I found the letter congratulating me on becoming a pilot. My license was in type two. I worked seven long months to earn this honor. I think Dr. Harriet Quimby, the first woman of the U.S. to receive a pilot's license. That was in 1911, and now it's 1921. It has taken 10 years of leaving the country for black women to receive the same honor that white women have already had. It's not fair, but I finally received my license and now I must decide what I will do with it. Should I stay here in France? People are more accepting of my race and will accept me for who I am. I would still be able to fly and do what I love. But I can also go back to the United States to be closer to my family. They would shower me with a hero's welcome for this great achievement, being the first African-American woman to receive a pilot's license. Plus, I could prove to the pilots who had refused to train me that they were wrong. They said, you're black, you're a woman, you aren't meant to fly. Well, this will surely prove them wrong. The looks on their faces as I fly high in the air above them will be the ultimate prize. I'm ready to go home to the United States, have a reunion with my family, and to inspire other black women to fly high. I'm blind from Maggie for what she said. 
first of all, why do I have to go to a Mexican school? I'm not a Mexican citizen, I'm an American. Even though my dad is from Mexico, I was born here, and I'm a U.S. citizen. My mom is from Puerto Rico, which is U.S. territory, and I speak perfect English. I'm frustrated and disappointed that I cannot go to 17th Street School with my cousins. I decided to stand up for my rights to make sure all Mexican boys and girls have the same right to attend schools.
Absolutely. We just want to say thank you again for making time and taking time out of your day to come see all the things that they've been working on and learning over the last several weeks. Um, I hope you take away a little piece of what they've learned today and feel empowered and um, encouraged to see what our future generations are working on. So let's give them one more round of applause.